Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, teacher. How are you? Hi. Good evening. Good evening. How are you, Ciro? Fine. That is great. Good to hear you. <laughs> okay. We have Ciro and Kimberly Nolasco. Hello. Hello. Okay. How... Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, Ciro. Let me um, let's see. I'm going to adjust my just my position in this chair. Okay, I think we're okay right there. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, how are you? How was your day? Well, busy day. <laughs> busy day. I can't imagine. Yeah, mine too. It was very busy. We have Sulma Beatriz is connecting. Carlos Antonio is also connecting. Okay. Everybody, welcome to this uh, session number three. I'm going to start sharing the screen with you right now. Let me see, yeah, uh, just a second. Okay, there it is. All right, can everybody see the screen I'm sharing? Yeah, okay, perfect. So, well, um, again, be welcome, everyone, uh, Kimberly, Ciro, Jessica, Sulma, and Carlos, uh, to this new class. It's uh, Inglés Intermedio, Modulo 3. That's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service. It's Intermediate 3, session number 3, and today is September the 7th, 2022, or 2022, if you want. So, everybody, welcome. Well, um, let's start. These are the lesson objectives. So by the end of this class, students will notice the different ways the letter O is pronounced. That's the first one. So today we study some pronunciation, okay? And uh, also by the end of this class, you will be able to use the passive without by. It's the same, it's the passive voice, the same passive voice we studied yesterday and the day before yesterday. But the difference is that this time you don't use by, okay? So in a way, it's easier. So uh, let's begin. First of all, this is what you have in the platform. I'm going to show you the platform right here. To go full screen. OK, platform uh, should be 1.4. It's the pronunciation section. OK, so in this section, it's loading. OK, um, Ms. Cerritos, I believe that's her name, <laughs> uh, will explain to you how to pronounce uh, O. Okay, in different words, but uh, I'm also here to expand on that information. Okay, so just for you to know, we are in section 1.4. So going back to the original presentation, wait, where's the presentation? Right here. Okay, this is what you'll find. It's pronunciation, the letter O. Okay, so everybody, um, I want you to watch the video after the class or tomorrow morning in the afternoon. And right now we're going to go into more detail. Now, there are different ways uh, to pronounce or of pronouncing, let's say, letter O, okay? Now, um, it can be a little bit difficult for us to hear or notice the difference between the different forms of pronunciation, but I want you to practice this in your house. You don't need to activate the microphone, okay? Because I know that practicing pronunciation sometimes is a little bit intimidating, right? So um, you can practice in your house. It is not necessary for you to act, uh, activate your microphone. Okay, just do it in your house. Okay, so um, I would like you, I want you to repeat after me. But first, let me show you. Right, you have these symbols. Have you seen these symbols before? Similar symbols in dictionaries, for example. Yes. Okay. Now um, these are not letters. Okay. These are symbols for pronunciation, okay? So this is not a letter A, no. This is the symbol, the phonetic symbol that represents a sound in English. Hey, what's going on? Can you see my screen? Oh, it went black for a second. Okay, uh, can everybody see the screen? Yes, okay, good. All right, so um, just repeat after me. Do it in your house. Again, don't activate your microphone. Do it in private. The first sound is the sound ah, okay? Again, it's the sound ah. 
very similar to the letter in Spanish. In Spanish, you say la letra A. So it's pretty much the same sound. It's A. And words that have this pronunciation or this sound, okay, in the letter O include hot, college, occupy, toxic, rock, pot, and follow, okay? Sometimes uh, it can be a bit shocking to listen to these words because sometimes we don't pronounce them the correct way. People say hot, college, occupy, but that's not the correct form. This is pronounced ah. So again, it's hot, college, occupy, toxic, rock, pot, and follow. Okay? If you can repeat the words in your house, that would be great. We're going for the second sound. The second sound is O. Oh. Okay? This is the sound O. Oh. In some dictionaries, you will find it like this. In some other dictionaries, it will appear like this. Okay? But it's the same sound, just different symbols. Now, uh, words that include the sound O oh in the letter O oh are, for example, O, oh, open, boat, soul, home, joke, bone. If you notice, all of these words have the sound O, oh, O, oh, all the time. Again, you can repeat after me in your house, right in private. O, oh, open, boat, soul, home, joke, bone. Okay? The next sound is ooh. This is the sound ooh. Sometimes you'll find it like this, and in some other dictionaries or websites, you can find it like this, but it's the same sound, ooh. Some examples include through, to, food, shoe, to, who and soon okay i'm going to repeat please repeat after me in your house through to food shoe to who soon And finally, we have this sound. It comes in words like love. It's the sound ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's similar to this one, but here you say ah, uh, ah. Uh. And this one is ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, you have to close your mouth a little bit. Okay, again, this one right here is ah, uh, ah. Uh. But this one right here is ah, uh, ah. Uh. And some examples include love, come, comfort, company, mother, some, stomach. Again, I'm going to say the words one more time and I want you to repeat in your house, okay? Love, come, comfort, company, mother, some, stomach, okay? There you go. One more time, I'm going to read all the words because some students are joining right now. So just for you. The first sound is ah, as in hot, 
college, occupy, toxic, rock, pot, follow. The next sound is O, as in O, open, boat, soul, home, joke, bone. The next sound is U, as in through, two, foo, shoe, two, who, and soon. And the final sound is a, uh, as in love, come, comfort, company, mother, some, and stomach. Okay. Now let's see how many students are there. There are 12 participants. So that means 11 because um, I'm also in the count right there. We're going to do this activity. Okay. And for this, um, you're going to work in the breakout rooms. What are you going to do? You need to classify the words in the boxes into the right category. Okay. Now, don't worry if you make mistakes, okay? This is a difficult exercise, let me tell you. But that's why you're going to work together, okay? You're I going to check your pronunciation. Kimberly. I'm sorry, teacher, yes. but I have a question. Yes. It's without the O, the words have the O. Mm -hmm. But I think there has to be a rules when they pronounce because all the words has O, so, how, how should I know about the songs? Okay, the thing about the English language is that there are some pronunciation rules, but they are more like generalizations. Pronunciation rules in English are not very specific. So it's best for us to memorize the, the sound of the words. That's the difficult part about English. You need to know the word, the meaning of the word, the spelling of the word, and also you need to memorize the pronunciation of the word. But don't worry, this is something that we do. It's a low process, okay? It's a very slow, sorry, it's not low process, it's a slow process, okay? We do it with the years, okay? But the more we practice this, the better we become at it, okay? So unfortunately, I cannot really give you a rule because rules are not really clear. Pronunciation rules are vague in English. They are more like generalizations. So uh, we're going to be practicing these words. So I'm going to send you to the breakout rooms, everybody. Let's see how many people are there. 13, okay, there are 13 right now. So that means 12 students. So what are you going to do, okay? You need to classify these words. There are five words in each column, five words per category, okay? The first one is a, as in hot. The second one is o, as in boat. The third one is u, as in two. And the last one is a, as in come. Okay? We're going to do, or we're going to solve the first part of the exercise. The first four will be done here. What about the first word, remove? Which column do you think it has to be classified in? Column one, two, three, or four? Three. Column, column three. three. Okay, yeah. let's see. I'm going to click on the word. You're right. Okay, it's column three. Very good. It's remove. What about this word right here? Job. Job. Column one, one two, three. three. Column two. Column two. Okay, let's oh. see. Job. Do we say job or job? Job. Number one. Number one. Okay, let's see. Job. You're right. It's job. Very good. What about onion? Ah, uh, onion. Column one, two, three, or four? Number two. Number two. Do we pronounce onion or onion? The number four. Number four. Let's see. It is number four. Correct. It's onion. And what about this one? Stone. Stone. It's one, two, three, or four. Number two. Number two. Carlos says. Okay. 
Let's see. That is correct. It's stone. So you see, a job. O stone. U remove. A onion. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. So I'm going to send you to the breakout rooms now. Okay. Let's see. And uh, I want you to uh, communicate with your classmate and solve this exercise together. I'm also going to send it to you via WhatsApp. Let me see. I have it right here. Where is the group? Oh, found it. Okay, I'm going to send you the picture right now. Just give me a second. Let's see here. That's the one. Okay, everybody, I want you to check your WhatsApp chat, okay, because I'm going to um, start the breakout rooms, and that means you cannot check. Uh, I cannot share the, the screen while I do this. Okay, I'm going to create six rooms. Here we go. Room number one will be Kimberly and Perla. Room number two, Jessica and Navy. Room three, Rebecca and Sulma. Room four, Mayra and Marvin. Room five, Ciro and Diego. Room six, Carlos and Rodrigo. Rodrigo Daniel. So we're going to start, okay? Please, let's do the exercise, but talk to your classmate, okay? Don't do it in silence. Okay, everybody, please join the groups, join the rooms. I'm going to start monitoring uh, the rooms right now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> practice makes yeah. perfect. The more you practice, the better you become. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go into a different room right now. Please continue working. Sure. Yes. Oh. Hello. Hola, en la tres. Hello, teacher. Okay, just just monitoring here. Please continue. No. Ah, como que soy invisible. <laughs> y en la que tiene doble O, teacher. Tool. 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 O una y una. Una <laughs> Es eh, la dos O cuentan como Ajá. un sonido. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tool. ¿Cuál será? Tool. Tool. Two. A three, three. Number three, correct. Very good. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, yes. ladies. I'm going to jump into a different room now. Next, nothing. Ok, yo tengo mis dudas si podría ser el 4 o por... Quiero ver por qué. Um... Hello, ladies. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Ok, ¿cómo vamos? Vamos por... Eh, solo que no, tenemos una duda con la compañera Rebeca. 
no, no nos queda muy claro cuándo usar el, el cuatro, que también es A, ¿verdad? El sonido es, el, sonido? el de la número uno es, es parecido a la letra A en español, es A, A. El del ah, cuatro ah. se parece, pero es más cerrado, es como A, oh, A. Oh. Number one, A, ah, A. Ah. Number four, A, oh, A. Oh. Esos son los que más cuestan ahí porque se parecen, pero no son iguales. Ajá. Por ejemplo, eh, body, body, uno lo hemos puesto, pero. That is correct. Body. 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 Mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Very good. Okay. okay. Please continue. I'm Thank going you. to jump into a different room. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Okay. How are you doing? Uh, I'll be late to the class. Ah, okay. no, don't worry, don't worry. ¿Cómo van? ¿Cómo vamos? Is it difficult? Uh, just for in my case. A little bit. Uh -huh. Yes. Eh, en mi caso, siempre he tenido eh, problemas con eso. Nunca he identificado en cuál va. Ah. Eh, eso me recuerda ah. que un teacher nos dijo que eran los, los Shua. Uh -huh. ah, o algo así se hacía eso. Shua es, es, digamos, el equivalente al sonido número 4. Es súper cercano no. a ese. Ajá. No, okay. De hecho, el Shua es el sonido de vocal más común en el idioma inglés. Es el que más pronunciamos y no nos damos cuenta. Así es. Entonces, yo, para serle franco, nunca he entendido eso. Ah, bueno. Bueno, tal vez con este ejercicio eh, nos quede un poquito más claro. Vamos a practicar sí. al final, no se preocupe. Ok, ok. Ok, I'm going to jump into a different room now. Ok. okay. Sí. Hello, gentlemen. Father, yeah. creo que es con A. Father. Sería ah, en, en la 1. En la 1, Father. Father. That okay. is correct. Ok. <laughs> ok. Father. Okay. Going to. Uh, let's see, you are in Father, the last one, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. I guess we're going to finish now. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, everybody, we're going to end the activity. Okay, so I'm going to stop the breakout rooms now. Just waiting one minute. If you haven't finished, don't worry. Okay, we're going to check answers together. Twenty five seconds. Diego has joined us, Ciro is also here, Jessica is also here, Rodrigo is here, Mayra is here, the other Rodrigo, Rodrigo Daniel is also here. Let's see. Okay. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. I'm going to share the screen with you again. Can you see the screen? Okay, perfect. Yes. Let's continue. Yes. What about the next word? Okay, you can participate right here. Hope. Which column is that? Number 
Column two. Okay, let's see. That is correct. It's column three, two. Okay, what about the next one? Two. This one is easy. Rodrigo. Uh, number three. Number three. Correct. Very good. Okay. Next one. You have nothing. Nothing. Don't be shy. Number four. Okay. That is good. It's correct. It's number four. Great. What about the next one? Clock. Clock. Remember to raise your hand, your digital hand. Jessica. And now four. Number four. No. Mm, let's see, let's see. It's actually one. number one. It's clock. The sound is ah, clock. Okay. What about the next one? Body. Body. Sulma. Number one. Number one. Correct. Thank you. What about what about uh what is it? Both. Both. Nady. Number two. Number two. Correct. Very good. What about the next one? Other. 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 Uh -huh. Number four. Number, <laughs> number four. four. Okay, Ciro says number four. Let's see. Ciro is right. Okay, it's number four. Good. What about goose? Goose. Rodrigo. Three. Number three. Correct. It's goose. Great. Um, what about the next one? Lose. Lose. Number three. Number three, Sulma says. That is correct. Okay, yeah. very good. What about sun? Sun. Rodrigo. Two. Number two. You sure? Do we say soon or sun? Four. Number four. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. It's number four. Okay, it's sun. Great. What about the next one? Post. Post. Navy. Number two. Number two. Okay. Rodrigo and Navy, I believe. <laughs> okay. Answered the question. It's number two. Correct. It's post. Very good. What about the next one? Monday. Monday. Navy. Number one. Number one. Let's see. Are you sure? Is it number one? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going to see. Um, I don't know, Rodrigo, if you, uh, okay, no, no, tenía levantada la manito. Okay, vamos. Monday is actually number four. The sound is a, uh, a, uh, ma, Monday. Okay? Es normal. El primer sonido y el cuarto se parecen, la verdad. Okay. What about uh, cost? Cost. Sandra. Uh, number two. Number two. Do we say cost or coast? Mm. The pronunciation is cost. Cost. Number one. Number one. That's right. Okay. Goes in number one. Good. What about movie? Movie. Three. Number three, that is correct. You have movie. What about most? Most. Two. Number two. Uh -huh. Yes. And obviously, you have bother. Bother. Say number one. Okay. Everybody, very good. Okay. 
ha habido unos errores, pero es lo más normal del mundo. La pronunciación es un poquito complicada. ¿verdad? Así que eh, vamos a hacer lo que hace un momento. Yo voy a leer todas las palabras. Si ustedes en su casa con el micrófono desactivado, practiquen por favor. ¿verdad? Ok, the first one is a as in hot, job, clock, body, cost, bother. Number two, O as in boat, stone, hope, both, post, most. Number three, U as in two, remove, tool, goose, lose, movie. Number four, a uh, as in come, onion, nothing, other, sun, Monday. Okay. Ready for the next part? Sandra is raising her hand. Do you have a question, Sandra? O le había quedado la manita levantada. Le había quedado levantada. <ríe> ok. La manita. Ah, ya le dolía de tenerla así levantada. <ríe> ok. Ok, let's continue, everybody. Now, uh, the next section, well, um, it's 1.6 in the platform. Let me show you. Just number 1.5 is the lesson objective. Ok. You're going to listen, be able to listen and practice a conversation between people asking for and giving information. Participants will also identify the passive with by in context. So uh, that's for you to work at home. Okay. Right now we're going to go over 1.6, which is the conversation. Uh, you will see uh, the video and in the video, you will read the conversation and uh, hear the conversation. Okay. So that's something that I want you to do at home. Right now, we're going to go directly on to 1.7. That's the lesson objective. And by the end of this class or the end of this section right now, you will be able to use the passive without by. It's the same thing, okay? The difference is that this time you don't use by. And that's exactly what we're going to see right here. Now, use the passive voice without by when the agent Do you remember the agent? ¿Quién se acuerda qué era el agent? Vamos a ver quién se acuerda. ¿Qué es el agent? Subject. No necesariamente. Es, es el subject en una oración activa. Pero en una oración pasiva, el subject no es el agent. Entonces, sí es el subject, como dice Ciro, pero solamente en oraciones activas. Ok, only in active sentences. El agent es la persona o la entidad que efectúa la acción. Ok. Entonces, ¿cuándo vamos a ocupar el passive without by? Use the passive without by when the agent is number one, unknown. What is the meaning of unknown? ¿Qué significa unknown? Desconocido. Desconocido. That is correct. Let's see an example. The wheel, la rueda, right, was invented over 5,000 years ago. Okay. ¿Por qué no ocupamos by en este caso? Mm -hmm. But no, but no, uh, by no invent the wheels. We don't know. Right? Yes, we didn't know. That's the idea. So who invented the wheel? The answer is nobody knows. ¿Quién se inventó la rueda hace más de 5,000 años? Nadie sabe. No hay registro al respecto. Así que, en este caso, es mejor ocupar el passive voice y no vamos a ocupar by porque no sabemos quién se le inventó la rueda. O sea, el agent es desconocido. ¿Ok? So we use the passive voice without by when the agent is unknown. The wheel was invented over 5,000 years ago. Who invented the wheel? Nobody knows. Okay. Let's go with number two. 
we use the passive without by when the agent is obvious. Example, two criminals were arrested last night. So my question is, who arrested the criminals? Mm -hmm. The police. The police, of course. Yes, okay. So the agent is obvious. No tenemos que decir que la policía los arrestó, los arrestó, perdón, porque eso la policía arresta a la gente. Okay, so two criminals were arrested last night. ¿Cómo quedaría esta oración si ocupáramos by y el agent? Two criminals were arrested by, last night by the police. Bastante lógica, pero redundante, porque todos sabemos que la policía es la que arresta a los criminales. ¿verdad? Así que no es necesario. Ok, we use the passive voice without by when the agent is obvious. And number three, we use the passive voice without by when the agent is unimportant. Irrelevant. Okay. Example. Oranges are imported into Canada every week. The question is, who imports the oranges into Canada? The answer is, we don't need to know that to understand the sentence. ¿Quién es el que manda las naranjas a Canadá? ¿Qué hace la importación? No importa, en realidad. O sea, no necesitamos saber quién hace eso para entender la oración. ¿Ok? Ahora, no es que la persona no sea importante. Todos son importantes. Pero para entender la oración, no es necesario saber quién lo hizo. So, oranges are imported into Canada every week. So, who imports the oranges into Canada? Answer, we don't need to know that to understand the sentence. That's why the focus is on the action, not on the person who does the action. Okay? El enfoque de la oración está en la acción. Lo que importa es que se mandan las naranjas a Canadá todas las semanas. Quien las manda, eso es irrelevante al final. No es algo que nos interese para entender la oración. Así que. Reviewing, we use the passive voice without by when the agent is unknown, like the wheel was invented 5,000 years ago. Obvious, two criminals were arrested last night or unimportant. Oranges were import, are imported into Canada every week. Si se fijan, en ninguna de las tres ocupamos by. Porque no, porque no sabemos quién lo hace, porque ya sabemos quién lo hace o porque simplemente no es importante. Okay, before we continue, do you have any questions? No questions? No, no questions. No questions. Okay, perfect. Let's continue. 840, time flies. All right. Read the following examples. Okay, active sentence, passive sentence. We're going to have a review on passive formation. They sell cold drinks here. Okay, this is an active sentence. Okay, vamos a ver. ¿Qué es lo primero que hay que identificar? What is the first thing you need to find? At the verb. The verb, correct. And what is the verb? Sell. Sell. That's right. Okay, that's the main verb. And uh, something else about the verb, you need, to, you need to find or you need to determine the tense. They sell, is it present or past? The past. Are you sure? Present. It's actually the present. Okay. The past of sell is sold. So this is the oh, present. Mm -hmm. So main verb, present simple. Okay, they sell cold drinks here. Very good. Now, um, what is the next thing that you need to find or determine? Mm -hmm. The subject. The subject, that is correct. And what's the subject in this sentence? They. They, correct. Okay, that's the subject. 
That's the subject and it's also the agent. ¿Por qué es el agent? Porque son ellos los que venden las bebidas, ¿verdad? Ellos efectúan la acción de vender, ¿ok? Ellos son los que venden. Así que el sujeto es el agent. Ok, and next, what do you need to determine? The object. The object, very good. Ok, and what is the object in this sentence? Cool drinks. Cold drinks, oh. correct, very oh, good. Oh, Entonces, ¿cómo encontramos el object? Solo nos preguntamos, they sell what? The answer is cold drinks. Ah, that's the object. Okay, very good. Y se me iba un errorcito, vamos a corregir. Ahí está, a tiempo. Okay, so that's the object, very good. So they sell cold drinks here. To form the passive, we need now the object from the active sentence, and we put it at the beginning. And now it's the subject. It's the subject of the passive sentence. Pero cuidado, no es el agent, porque las bebidas no hacen nada. Ah, no tienen capacidad de hacer nada. Son objetos nomás. So, cold drinks. What's next? ¿Qué es lo que sigue ahí? The bear and pass. The verb, but what verb? The soul. Before that, we need something else. Verb B. The verb be, correct. Okay, we need the verb be. Uh, Sandra. Este, I iba a decir el verbo. Se la adelantaron. Okay, the verb be. Okay. Y muy importante en esta parte es eh, saber el tiempo en el que va a estar conjugado el verb be. ¿Y cómo sabemos eso? El past participle. No, that's the main verb. Ese es el verbo principal. La clave está acá, fíjense. En la oración activa siempre tenemos que identificar el tiempo de verbo, que es present simple. Ese mismo vamos a ocupar con el verb be. Eso es lo que nos va a determinar la forma del verb be. Entonces, sabemos que el verb be en presente es am, is, or are. Entonces, cold drinks. In this are. case, are. Are, correct. Are. Okay. Cold drinks are. Now we need to use the main verb in past participle, as you mentioned before. What is the past participle of sell? Sold. 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 That's right. Yeah. Cold drinks are sold here. Esto en español sería algo como aquí se venden bebidas frías. ¿Quién las vende? En realidad no necesitamos saber eso, solo vamos, las compramos y nos las sirven. ¿no? Ok, so notice that the object in the active sentence, which is called drinks, is the same as the subject in the passive sentence. In this case, we, number one, don't know who does the action. In number two, we don't need to know to understand the sentence. Aquí se cumple lo que habíamos dicho anteriormente. Prácticamente se cumple el número uno y el número tres. No sabemos quién vende las, las, las bebidas, ni tampoco es necesario saber quién las vende para ir a comprar una, ¿verdad? Si a usted le dice en una tienda, mire, quiero comprar una Coca-Cola, dice, ¿en esta tienda venden? Ah, chido, pero usted no va a decir, ¿y quién la vende? <ríe> no es necesario, solo va y la compra. Ok, lo mismo pasa acá. Ocupamos el passive voice precisamente porque no es necesario decir quién lo hace. Cold drinks are sold here. End of story. Okay. Second example. Someone painted this office last week. What is the main verb? Paint. Painted. That's the main verb. Correct. And it's in. Oops, made a mistake here. Sorry. This is past. Give me a second. Wow. Okay, painted. There you go. It's the main verb and it's in past simple. Okay. The subject. Mm -hmm. 
Someone. Someone, correct. The subject is someone. And that's the agent too. And what is the object? Someone painted what? This office. This office, that is correct. So this office is the object. Okay. Okay. Present simple. Sorry about that. Okay, that's the object. Now, uh, to form the passive, okay, you use this office at the beginning of the sentence is the new subject. And then we need to use the verb be, okay? The verb be in what tense? Is it going to be present or past? Past. It's going to be past. Why? Because we identify past simple in the active sentence. Is the verb being passed? So this office was correct. Very good. This office was. After that, we need the main verb in past participle form. So this office was mm -hmm. paint. paint. Uh -huh. Painted. Painted. It's the same because it's a regular verb. So the past form and the past participle are the same, or they are spelled the same. So this office was painted last week. Okay. Será que es necesario saber quién pintó la oficina? No necesitamos saber quién la pintó. Lo importante es que la pintaron, ¿no? So again, in this case, we Number one, don't know who did the action. And number two, we don't need to know to understand the sentence. Okay, good. We're going to do an exercise right here. And uh, again, we're going to go into the breakout rooms. But before we go, remember, this is very important. This is the main structure of the passive voice. The passive voice always, always uses the verb be, and the main verb in past participle. So what are you going to do? Breakout rooms, your turn. Complete the sentences using these verbs in the correct form, either present or past. ¿Qué implica esto? Que dependiendo del contexto de la oración, vamos a ocupar el verb be en presente o el verb be en pasado. Algunas veces va a ser is or are, y otras veces va a ser was or were. Así que mucho cuidado ahí, ¿verdad? Si decimos, por ejemplo, many accidents, bla, 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 by dangerous driving. Entonces, you're going to use, I'm sorry, you're going to use the verbs from the box in passive voice. In number one, this is ge in general, okay? Many accidents, bla, 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 by dangerous driving. Do you think this is present or past? Estamos hablando de algo que sucede de manera general. Present or past? Past. Past. Pero es algo que sucede de manera general. Present. It's present. Ese es un análisis que tenemos que hacer ahí, ¿verdad? Si es algo que sucede de forma general, vamos a ocupar present. Pero si es algo específico en el pasado, vamos a ocupar past. Así que, many accidents are caused by dangerous driving. Ya ocupamos cause. Ya no lo vayan a ocupar ustedes, ¿de acuerdo? Okay. Pero dice que no es pasado. Eh, el verbo principal es en past participle, pero lo que determina en este caso si es presente o pasado es el verb be, lo que está antes. ¿Sí? Vamos a hacer dos ejemplos más y les voy a dejar los otros a ustedes. Number two, cheese, blah, 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 from milk. Is this um, in general? Are we talking about something that occurs in general? Or are we talking about a specific event in the past? Bless you. General. In general, correct. So that means we're going to use the verb be in present. Cheese. Blah, 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 from milk. Make. What, what será? R make. Ah, cheese is an uncountable noun. You don't use R. You have to use is. 
is, is made is make uh -huh. is made from milk y luego made ocupamos el verbo milk. make pero en past participle verdad cheese is made from milk el queso se hace de la leche ok vamos a hacer la número tres juntos y luego van al breakout room the roof of the building bla 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 in a storm many days ago are we talking about something that happens in general or are we talking about a specific event in the past past it's an event in the past event. correct Day it's a, yes that's right it's a specific event in the past because it reads many days ago así que si está en pasado vamos a ocupar el verb be en pasado the roof of the building the techo del edificio what is the form of the verb be was uh -huh. damaged was damaged, correct. Damage. The roof of the building was damaged in a store many days ago. Correct, very good. Entonces ese es el análisis que hay que hacer, ¿verdad? Usted dice, esto sucede de forma general, bueno, entonces es present. Y si es present, va a ocupar el verb be en forma presente. Pero si es algo que pasó precisamente, es del pasado, un evento específico en el pasado, entonces va a ocupar el verb be en pasado, que sería was or were. Y el verbo principal es siempre, siempre, siempre past participle. Ok. I'm going to create the rooms now. Although I think they are the same. Vamos a trabajar en los mismos grupos. Ok. Um, I'm sending you to the rooms right now. I'm going to send you the, the exercise via WhatsApp right now too. Okay, everybody, please join the breakout rooms. Y unos que no están asignados, los voy a asignar en este momento. Okay, everybody has been assigned to a room. Please join the rooms. Everybody, please check the WhatsApp chat for the exercise. Cuatro. Sí. Ya está, House Damar. Y el teacher nos. Ya empezamos. Estamos en acción, maestro. Eso, eso. Yo. Así que vamos a ver. Ya casi la hora. Cinco sí, minutos. Sí, sí sería el último ejercicio y luego terminamos acá. Okay. Está muy buena explicación. <risa> ok. Uh -huh. Number four. ¿Cómo, ¿Qué idea tienen you are, ahí? You are invited. You are ok. Good idea, but look at that. Why didn't you go? ¿Por qué no fuiste? Is this present or past? Past. It's past. Ajá. Entonces past. no puede okay. ser you are. Tendría no. que ser. Was. But we don't use was with the subject you. Where. Ajá. Not. You, you, sería, you were invited to the wedding. Why you didn't were. you go? Okay. Te invitaron a la fiesta. ¿Por qué no fuiste? You were invited to the wedding. Why didn't you go? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's continue. Okay. I'm going into a yeah. different room. That's Thanks. It. See you later.
Why didn't you go? Hello. Hello. Hola, teacher. Ah, entonces sería to is if did it. ¿Verdad? Sí. Vaya, veamos. Están en la número cuatro, ¿verdad? En la foto. Ok. Si se fijan, dice you to the wedding. Pero luego está la pregunta. Why didn't you go? ¿Por qué no fuiste? ¿Por qué no fuiste? Entonces, ¿está Ajá. en presente o en pasado? Ah, en pasado. En pasado, así es. Porque ya pasó. Ajá. Ajá. Entonces sería... Entonces, was, was. Pero no ocupamos was con el sujeto you. You, no, ajá, you, where. You, you were, were, ajá. You ajá, were, you were invited. 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 You were invited to the, to the wedding. Why didn't you go? Te invitaron a la fiesta. ¿Por qué no fuiste? Ajá. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Very good. Ok. Yes. Ok, let's continue. I'm going to jump into a different room. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, election for president, president. Cada cuatro años. Mm -hmm. Ar, ar, hold, hold, hold. Hold es sostener, pero también se puede utilizar cuando hablamos de eventos. Así que esa es. Uh -huh. Ah, oh, thank you, teacher. Election for president. Are for every year, every four years. Okay, but remember, the main verb is in past participle. Mm -hmm. Hold. Hold. No sé cómo es. Mm -hmm. Hold. It's, it's, it's an irregular verb. Hold. The past participle is held. Hold. Held. Held. Uh -huh. So in the United States, elections for president are held every four years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are held, correct. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to jump into the next room. See you later. Thank you. Hi, uh, Marvin and Hi. Rodrigo. Okay, ¿cómo vamos? I finish. We'll finish. You finished. Okay, very good. Do you have any questions in any of the items? Uh, no, teacher. No questions. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to um, leave the room now. Okay. Okay, everybody, um, we're going to close the breakout rooms now. Okay, just waiting for everybody to rejoin the, the main group. Twenty seconds. Okay. Una preguntita les tengo nada más. Por lo que alcancé a ver en los breakout rooms, eh, algunos grupos eh, lograron cubrir bastante el ejercicio. Hubo uno que terminó, 
otros más o menos llevan como a la mitad del ejercicio. Quisieran que revisáramos en este momento o les gustaría llevarse esto como tarea y lo revisamos mañana al entrar a clase. ¿Qué dice el público? <risa> Homework. Homework. Ok. Homework. Ok. Great, great. Vaya, vale, entonces no les voy a mandar las respuestas todavía. <risa> Vamos a ver mañana. Ok. Uh, before we finish, do you have any questions? No questions. Okay, great. So everybody remember to do the exercises in the platform. Okay, we have, uh, I need some information, the lesson objective and the passive without buy. I want you to watch the video, it's 1.8 and do the exercise in 1.9, the knowledge check. Everybody, please. Okay. Necesito que hagan ese ejercicio también, verdad? Knowledge check. Okay. De nuevo, mi recomendación es que lo vayan haciendo poco a poco. Yo sé que a lo mejor estamos cansados ya a esta hora, después del día de trabajo y a las nueve de la noche. Ya solo queremos irnos a dormir. Pero los ejercicios son cortos, los videos son cortos, así que dediquemos el tiempo para que no nos vayamos a atrasar. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you very much. And uh, I will see you tomorrow at eight. Take care. Thank you, Thank you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.